Hello and welcome. You're watching To The Point. There is a major dispute between the government and the opposition over the Aadhaar bill. The opposition is upset at the bill being declared a money bill. It's also angry because it suspects the government will not provide time for a discussion in the Rajya Sabha. If that happens, 14 days after the bill was tabled, it will be deemed passed. That means the Rajya Sabha will not have had a chance to scrutinize the bill at all. For its part, the opposition is said to be planning to move amendments under Article 109, which would embarrass and inconvenience the government, but not stop the bill. So today we discuss all these aspects of the Aadhaar controversy. My guests are BJP Rajya Sabha MP Chandan Mitra, Congress spokesperson and MP Abhishek Singhvi, CPI Rajya Sabha MP D Raja, the well-known columnist and commentator Ashok Malik, and the political editor of the Business Standard, Aditi Fadnis. Abhishek Singhvi, given that the government intends Aadhaar as a mechanism by which money from the consolidated fund will be paid as subsidies, Surely the government has a sound case for arguing this is a money bill. On what grounds does your party disagree? The mildest word which can be used for calling it a money bill is a fraud on the power. The reason is simple, Karan. The word only is ignored in Article 110. It is a money bill if only, I repeat the word only, it does the A, B, C, D, E, F which you have seen in 110. Now, those A, B, C, D, E, F are too long to recite in Article 110. But this is clearly a not a bill dealing with the imposition alteration of tax, not a bill dealing with the regulation of borrowing or guarantee by the government, not a bill dealing with issues about expenditure in terms of basic. There is another provision called 117 which says that expenditure out of the Consolidated Fund of India can be done by a financial bill. But a financial bill has to be just passed a moment. by both houses. Mr. Singhvi, a this bill, bill just a moment, Mr. Singhvi, before you, I am interrupting you. This bill so, fulfills 1101D, yes. the appropriation of monies out of the Consolidated Fund of India. It fulfills that fully. Correct. So then, so why, why, why every can't bill it be a money it? bill? Tell me a single bill where you can have money expenditure because it must not do anything else. D which you are citing Mr. Karan Thapar is meant for an appropriation bill which is what Mr. Jaitley is going to be moving shortly after the finance uh, okay. uh, act. Let in, me after the budget. Your argument hinges on the absence. Read Absolutely, one I've understood. Now, your argument hinges on the what? absence of the word Karan, only. Let me bring in Chandan Mitra. No, Chandan Mitra, second, the Karan. argument you're hearing is a very important no, Karan, one. one. What one Abhishek second. Singh? This Abhishek, bill. hold your horses. I've understood your point. So has the audience. It hinges on the absence of the word only. Chandan Mitra, despite the fact you've changed the name and made it targeted delivery of financial and other subsidies, benefits and services bill. What is also clear from this bill is that you intend to use Aadhaar as a means of biometric identification. And that second purpose is bound to be the greater use of Aadhaar because your bill makes it possible for Aadhaar to be used for authentication purposes for salary payments old age pensions, school enrollment, train bookings, marriage certificates, driving licenses, SIM cards and even use of cyber cafes. So clearly you can't say this is a financial bill when it has so many other uses. It's a fraud as Abhishek Singhvi says to call this a money bill. Absolute, absolute, absolutely not Karan. It is far from a fraud. This is a move to genuinely help the uh, people of the country, particularly the poor. And the Aadhaar has a dual purpose. It is, is all that you just listed out, the identification and so on and so forth. But since the government is going to use it to transfer funds from the Consolidated Fund of India to targeted beneficiaries, it is the money part which is the crucial aspect of the bill as it is being brought. So the use of the can second I, part can I, of the Aadhaar provision, can I interrupt namely you? the transfer of funds, that is why it's a money bill. Well, have on a second. No, no, no. No, it's not a money bill. Chandan Mitra, Chandan Mitra, I'm interrupting you because what you're overlooking is the absence of the use of the word only. 
110, Article 110 says, for the purposes of this chapter, a bill shall be deemed to be a money bill if it contains only provisions dealing with all or any of the following. That is not the case here. This bill clearly contains provisions dealing with other things. I've just named those, the biometric authentication for a whole range of purposes. Therefore, the word only doesn't fit. Therefore, it's not a money bill. But the Aadhaar, Aadhaar card already exists. This exists, everybody has got an Aadhaar number. So this is already existing. Now, if you're going to add the monetary provision into Aadhaar, it, it becomes a uh, money bill because you're transferring money. And mind you, one thing Mr. Singhvi uh, conveniently avoided is that it, in the view of the Speaker of the Lok Sabha, if a bill uh, has a monetary provision and the Speaker of the House certifies that it is a money bill, it will be deemed to be so. Okay. In her view, or in her, this case, her view is binding and final. Well, yes, I can in a month's time come to the argument Sita Ramichuri makes about that point. But before I do that, Ashok Malik, uh, I want what? to put to you the following thing. If you look at the list of money bills since independence, you'll find that in 1986, Rajiv Gandhi treated a juvenile justice bill as a money bill. If that could happen, Mr. Raja, in 1986 and be considered correct, why then is it wrong today, Mr. Raja, for an Aadhaar bill to be considered a money bill? Answer that to me. I do not think we considered uh, what was done in 1986 uh, was correct. I do not uh, think so. Now, we are discussing Aadhaar bill. And uh, this should not be treated as money bill. That is our fundamental position. But don't the reasons but are well don't known. Here, here, the of the here, past set a precedent for the future. In Parliament, precedents are very important. Rajiv Gandhi has set the precedent. The, the, but uh, there can be new precedents also. Because some wrong thing was done, it should not be repeated in the name of precedent. That's what I am trying to tell. I don't want to call it as fraud as uh, my uh, friend uh, Abhishek Manushingvi uh, has been calling it, but it is not a proper, fair use of parliamentary practice okay. or the constitutional morality. That is where I question this bill should not be treated as money bill, number one. And it is not only just to the delivery of targeted subsidies and benefits and also services it talks about services services means not only of government but of private entities also uh, uh, what do they mean by all these things uh, that is what consolidated fund can be given to private entities that's a very government good second point you're making many questions that's I am a telling. very good point you're making ashok malik I want to raise with you the argument Sitaram no. Yuchuri made about Article 110.3, which says that the Speaker's decision on what is or is not a money bill will be final. And we know that in this instance, Sumitra Mahajan has ruled that the Aadhaar bill is a money bill. Now, Mr. Yuchuri said that in India, Speakers come from the ruling party and tend to be less than partial, less than objective. In fact, sometimes they tend to be partisan. How can anyone therefore be sure that in this instance, Mrs. Mahajan, who overlooks that critical only requirement, which is essential if you go by the Constitution, is not being partial and failing to be objective. You know, you either rewrite the whole Constitution and get an uh, import a speaker from uh, London and from, from maybe from a panel of neutral speakers, like we have neutral umpires in cricket, or we just go by what we have. Even uh, the speaker of the previous Lok Sabha, Mr. Shomna Chachiji, was often accused of being biased, sometimes by his own party. Uh, but that's, that's the system we have, we can't run away from it. Uh, the, the fact is, ordinarily the Aadhaar bill should not have been a money bill. But the government is exploring, the government and the speaker, I guess, are exploring the frontiers of uh, the constitution or parliament, pra parliamentary practice and procedure and precedent because, uh, frankly, they, they found the Rajya Sabha, the government has found the Rajya Sabha not very cooperative in, in passing constitutional amendments or, or non-money bills. You know, you uh, said something very interesting. Can I interrupt? They are 
technically said, and legally in the right. What I guess uh, they're entitled to exploring what, these frontiers. You said that uh, technically. Can I can interrupt you, Ashok? You said that technically and, and uh, legally and in the right, but at the same time, you also said that they are exploring the frontiers of the constitution, which sounds very exciting because it suggests new and novel practice and new and novel interpretation. But the problem with new and novel interpretation and practice is that it could be wrong. It could be a breach of the constitution. And that's the problem. You're half admitting it when you say it. Oh, we've lost to Shok Malik. That question will remain hanging in the air. Let me come to you, Aditi Fadness. Do you believe, and this was inherent in the second part of Ashok Malik's answer, that this decision to treat the Aadhaar bill as a money bill is actually part of the BJP's wider belief? which Arun Jaitley has at least on two separate occasions exp expounded, that the powers of the upper house to hold up legislation passed by the lower house should be curbed, as has happened in England as early as 1949, and as has happened more recently with the Senate in Italy. Do you think this is part of that? And in a sense, when Ashok Malik talks about exploring the frontiers, it does suggest this is what he's, ha he's doing. Well, I don't know what he's trying to do. All I know is that right in the beginning of this government's tenure, if you recall, there were two ordinances, one to do with mining and the other one to do with the MMRDA and uh, there were two ordinances that the government had passed. Uh, you had the BJD, for instance, arguing vociferously against the ordinance and saying we want a bill and we don't want these ordinances to be presented to us post facto, etc., etc. And yet, after Piyush Goel as minister went and talked to them, persuaded them, Piyush Goel went and met every party. Mm. He spent hours with leaders to persuade them, to t tell them that, look, this will, this will be good for your state. You will get a lot of money by way of royalties. And then you had the BJD arguing But that's a different speeches. thing we're talking about. I'm talking How? about is it's this. A question of, it's a question of uh, when parliamentary practices become uh, untenable, then you have to resort to these kind of kind of I wouldn't say underhand, but circuitous uh, rules means to get your legislation passed. So then Why? you do accept in principle that this may well be part of the wider attempt by the BJP to restrain the capacity of the upper house to hold up legislation passed by the lower house. Sure, that's that's why it's come. I mean, that's why Chandra it's Mitra, happening. A second controversy about the Aadhaar bill is that even after converting it into a money bill. The government doesn't seem to want to give the upper house any time to discuss it. First of all, the government has turned down the opposition's request to extend the session by two days. And now it's quite possible that after the railway budget and the proper budget are discussed, there will be no time left to discuss Aadhaar in the one day that's left of the first half of the session. And therefore, in addition to perhaps wrongly treating this as a money bill, you're also well, denying the right to have I, a chance to debate I'm and hope. discuss it. Well, first and foremost, it has already been discussed in great, great detail in the Lok Sabha. And while I, as a member of the Rajya Sabha, uh, I'm eagerly looking forward to a discussion on this in the Rajya Sabha to nail the kind of obstructionist tactics of the Congress Party uh, let us see how much time we have left. But as far as my knowledge till this evening is concerned, I am told that the government proposes to allot some time in the Rajya Sabha for a discussion. Although, as you know, Rajya Sabha will not be voting on the money bill. But we will, I think, I believe, we will get an opportunity to put our views on the table and Rajya Sabha may well sit till past midnight tomorrow to clear all these bills that you have mentioned, the budgets and everything. Okay. And I hope the Aadhaar bill will also be discussed. We will find time for it. Abhishek Singhvi, an unnamed senior AICC functionary speaking to today's Economic Times has said that the intention of not giving the Rajya Sabha adequate or possibly any time at all to discuss the Aadhaar bill is, and I'm quoting, to circumvent legislative scrutiny by the Rajya Sabha. Now, you've just heard Chandan Mitra say that he hopes and he believes that the Rajya Sabha might sit till midnight tomorrow, thus actually providing time to discuss Aadhaar after finishing the discussion on the railway budget and the normal budget. Would that be adequate time for scrutiny or would you still, as an opposition, feel you've been denied a chance to discuss properly? Karan, Karan legislative scrutiny doesn't mean sitting till midnight. Legislative scrutiny means the power to change the bill. 
the constitution is supreme not the speaker suppose tomorrow under the speaker's power under 11100 she certified a road bill outside your house as a money bill that doesn't make it a money bill in substance it must meet 110 main provision secondly you remember the promulgation of ordinances under the power you can keep on promulgating repromulgating ordinance if you read the bare text of the constitution it was challenged as a fraud on power i didn't say fraud i said fraud on power fraud on power means in the wadhwa case way back that if you keep on repromulgating ordinance you are circumventing the legislative power of parliament now the real point is that unless rajya sabha has the power to change a law merely sitting and discussing till the cows come home till midnight is futile that is not legislative scrutiny you are clearly every speaker including the bjp virtually admits that because they don't have a majority in the rajya sabha this is a mechanism to circumvent the legislative voting power of the rajya sabha okay. and that is precisely what a fraud on power is it's described in law as colorable exercise of power namely you have the power but you misuse it for an ulterior motive now you have the power to declare something a money bill but you are misusing it for an ulterior motive by characterizing or mischaracterizing something which is obviously not a money bill Mr. Mr. Raja, suppose current and every bill you started doing it, Mr. How Raja, could you, you could bypass uh, 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 Rajya Sabha in that way. Mr. So, ouster clause like one one zero three is of no use. Okay, I understand, Mr. Raja. One of the reasons why the opposition feels scrutiny at great length, a debate and discussion with adequate time is necessary, is because, as pointed out by Jean Dres in today's Hindu, this bill could be a threat to the privacy of Indian citizens. Jean Dres. says specifically that this could be used as the basis for mass surveillance some sort of eaves dropping and snooping on the rights and privacy of every indian but let me put the opposite to you we have today a very active judiciary that holds up the rights of indian citizens we have today an outspoken media we have above all a vibrant social media given all of those three is it not an exaggeration to actually believe that without a discussion in the rajya sabha you will have mass surveillance and an invasion of privacy is that not an exaggerated argument karan uh, since uh, you have referred to judiciary uh, i must uh, remind you supreme court once said uh, aadhar card uh, cannot be made mandatory to have benefits from the state so supreme court has made that observation one should understand despite that why they are making it as mandatory number one number two yes there is question of privacy and there is question of biometrics and what is the technological level of biometrics in india even the uidi admits that uh, even in developed countries that technology has not developed and in india given the government agrees the nature and diversity of the country uh, pose certain challenges uh, in order in the case of uh, working people and it can lead to massive exclusion of uh, poor people getting uh, the benefits subsidies okay. from the state so there are many issues involved i i am not getting into these issues right now but the point here is there are certain gray areas it has been termed as money bill now tomorrow if it is taken for discussion there are amendments circulated but what is the fate of these amendments because it is money bill and uh, rajya sabha has no say and uh, rajya sabha has to return it then wh what about the circulation of amendments there are gray areas and the constitution says 110 article 110 if a question is raised whether it is money bill or not the decision of speaker is final we, so Mr. question Mr. is raised Mr. Mr. question is raised in rajya sabha let me stop you there you are repeating things others have said and i take that point but i want to move on to a new point one reason why there is grave concern that this bill needs to be discussed and discussed thoroughly in the rajya sabha is a point made today in the indian express by sachin pilot he says that the bill will permit a joint secretary level officer to access biometric details on the vague grounds that it's in the interest of national security and two questions arise firstly is a joint secretary level officer senior enough to have such powers because you could be invading the privacy of every individual if they exercise wrongly and secondly the phrase in the interest of national security can be interpreted loosely to mean anything and everything and the two together 
could lead to a huge and serious misuse of the biometric details that are being entrusted. Do you not think this is one good reason why the Rajya Sabha must debate this thoroughly? And if it emerges that the Rajya Sabha has no time to debate, that will be a mockery of our Rajya Sabha and of our democracy. Well, I would say any bill that the Rajya Sabha does not have time to debate will be a mockery because the Rajya Sabha is there for a purpose. It's not some kind of ornamental uh, kind of guild uh, which, which is there just because it's, uh, it, it, it looks pretty. It's there for a purpose. There are very intelligent people sitting there and they know what, what is what and who is who. Uh, the question is not that. I think, okay, if the Rajya Sabha uh, is unable to make any changes in that, I'm sure society will take over and will force changes upon it. But, but, but the greater concern is this. The greater concern is this. It's been deemed to be a money bill and Sumitra Mahajan hasn't changed her mind and there's nothing you can do about it because she has the final word. That means the Rajya Sabha can't make any changes. But my point now is, not the Rajya Sabha's inability to make changes. My question is to do with the fact that it's quite possible the government may not let this be discussed tomorrow at all. And if it doesn't get discussed tomorrow, then 14 days will lapse from the day it was tabled and it will be deemed to have been passed. And that will mean it will have been passed without any scrutiny, any debate, any discussion in the Rajya Sabha. Now, given the sort of concerns Sachin Pilot has raised, would that be acceptable? No, it's not acceptable and I'm pretty sure it will be overturned at some forum by somebody in the coming months, in the coming weeks, but coming that, days, that coming months. That means that we're relying on something outside but parliament to overturn is, it. Sure, Let me come I'm, to you, Ashok Malik, because the real issue now is not to do with whether this should be a money bill or not. There are concerns about it being made a money bill. There are some like Sita Ramichuri who feel that Smitra Mahajan is wrongly exercising her powers to call it a money bill. But leave that aside. We're now talking about the fact the real possibility that the government may not have time tomorrow for this to be discussed because the budget has to be discussed, the railway budget has to be discussed and that would mean that 14 days would pass after this bill was tabled. The railway budget was over. 14 days would pass after this bill was tabled and it would deemed to have been passed without discussion, without scrutiny in the Rajya Sabha. Now, would that not make A, a mockery of the Rajya Sabha and B, of Indian democracy? You know, uh, frankly, it would make a mockery, but uh, again, it's not unprecedented. We know of several bills which have been unanimously passed in the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha after barely uh, a minute's discussion. Uh, we've seen, we've had numerous precedents in this parliament, in, in this uh, Lok Sabha, in the previous Lok Sabha. So it, it's, it's, it's not as if parliament discusses every bill threadbare. It should. That is part of parliament's mandate. But it doesn't do it and uh, if this bill also uh, goes through without a discussion, it would add to a long list of disappointments. Yes, absolutely and that's but one way I of looking at it. I would not to the this is the only bill which has not been discussed. Absolutely, but is it, I can understand that there's a long tradition of bills not being discussed and what you're therefore saying is one more wouldn't matter. But I put it to you that surely the duty no, of parliamentarians is to each ensure there never is one more. And for this government, in particular, to ensure Absolutely. that the bad so practices each, each of the past such, don't continue. Each such, each such precedent is a bad precedent, including this one. Chandra Mitra, I want to come back to that key core concern raised by Sachin Pilot. Because to many, it perhaps touches at the very core of why this bill needs to be discussed. I'm not any longer talking about it be deemed money or not money. That's a different issue. I'm talking about the fact that under this bill, a joint secretary can, in the interest of national security, whatever that phrase may mean, may make available biometric details for anything and everything. And you know, because you've been a campaigner for human rights as an editor, that the phrase in the interest of national security is so loose that it can be misused. Is that not one good reason why there must be a thorough discussion tomorrow? And if it so transpires that there's no time, that would be a terrible outcome for the Rajya Sabha and for Indian democracy. Well, firstly, as I am repeating, that it has been discussed thoroughly in the Lok Sabha, which is a bigger house and a directly elected house. And mind you, you see, the, this thing about uh, invasion of privacy, etc., these are yet to be proved. And the purpose of the bill is much larger. It is to actually benefit millions of um, undernourished, underprivileged people in India. Okay. And if incidentally or coincidentally some provisions are misused, I'm sure the judiciary 
and other uh, civil society is there to put a stop to this kind of misuse. But for these reasons, you cannot stop a bill that will transform can I, can the economic Chandan, lives of you know, you know what you are suggesting? In India. Can I interrupt? You are suggesting that, that the inefficiencies of Parliament will be made up for by the judiciary because the judiciary is there to look at the mistakes Parliament makes. But that is like saying it doesn't no, matter if Parliament is inefficient. Current, 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 current. Current, which is the most important money bill in the country? It is the budget. Now in the budget also it's a money bill, therefore it is not voted upon in the Rajya Sabha. Yes, we discuss, but it, is, it remains a money bill. The Rajya Sabha does not have any power to amend it. Okay. So what is the big deal? I don't understand. Well, let this me let me let me get in let me get in Abhishek Singhvi to answer your question. What is the big deal? Abhishek Singhvi, you heard Chantan say that this bill has been thoroughly discussed in the lower house, which he says is the bigger house. Can a discussion in the lower house replace the need for a discussion in the upper house? And if that is the case, then are you not making the upper house ipso facto irrelevant? I think, Karan. No, no, no. Karan, I the think budget is also uh, not voted up the bag with the sentence used by Dr. Mitra. Uh, it is uh, the budget is not voted because nobody in his right senses doubts that the budget is a money bill and there is a specific statutory ex a constitutional exception for a money bill but if that logic is taken that merely the budget is a very important bill is not voted in Raj Sabha so what let's have hundred other bills not voted upon in the Raj Sabha can that logic be even stated to be and does it not have to be rejected even if it's stated today circumvention of legislative voting scrutiny by the upper house is a fraud on the constitutional power. Okay. A constitutional power is always given for bona fide exercise. You cannot circumvent it by colorable use of it. That's a well-known doctrine. And I invite you, Karan, to look at Vadhva's case, decided by the Supreme Court, which struck down the practice of repeatedly re-promulgating uh, ordinances, although the constitution permits it. The court said, if you keep on promulgating an uh, ordinance, then parliament or assembly sits, then it lapses. Uh, you you, you made that bill. point earlier, Abhishek. Again, in the next uh, Abhishek, time, you, you made that point earlier. Do it ten times. I'm going to stop you because you made that point earlier. You're repeating now, something you said earlier. How can it be an argument? How can it be an argument, Karan? Yeah, I, say, I accept the no, point no, you're making, Mr. Singhvi, but you've made that, that point earlier. Let's not waste time repeating I mean, points we've already made because then we won't be going further. Welcome back. You're watching to the point, and we are discussing the Aadhaar bill and the controversy that it's created. Mr. Raja, I want to now come to the strategy the opposition has devised for handling the Aadhaar bill in the Rajya Sabha. Sita Ram Yuchuri has told me that he and the rest of the opposition will move amendments under Article 109. I want to ask you a simple question. What purpose will that serve? What will it achieve? There is a point that is, what is the power of Rajya Sabha? Uh, uh, that should be uh, redefined because uh, now the BJP government thinks Rajya Sabha can be undermined for every reason and uh, Rajya Sabha will have to express its opinion whether it is money bill or not number one. Number two, already some members have moved certain amendments. They have been circulated by Rajya Sabha secretariat. It means th there is a possibility for moving the amendments. If Rajya Sabha really carries some amendments in the bill, then it has to go back to uh, Lok Sabha. Uh, the, 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 whether uh, there is precedent or not, that you may question me. Okay. But already I said it is a grey area. All right. There are amendments already accepted and they have been circulated. And Rajya Sabha will have to give its opinion on these okay. amendments. Let me, let me, Rajya let me. Sabha passes certain amendments, I, I heard what then what happens? Let me bring in Mr. Abhishek Singhvi. You know, Mr. Singhvi, even if you pass amendments in the Rajya Sabha under Article 109, all the government has to do is to go back to the Lok Sabha, repass the Aadhaar bill without any of the Rajya Sabha amendments, and that's the end of the day. So beyond a certain delay, and a possible inconvenience for the government, what have you achieved by using 109? Therefore, the answer to your question about Mr. Sitaram Yachuri's comment is twofold. One, 
constitutionally and legally you are right, no effect because the Lok Sabha can pass it again. Symbolically a lot of effect, discussion, debate, making the point, publicizing the point, publicizing the fraud on power being done by the government and I would add Karan that in a suitably constituted legal proceeding later on in the courts, whether you call it a PIL or something else, this proposition should be tested. That that's a constitution matter. is supreme, not the declaration of power under the constitution. But that's another matter. So tomorrow what happens in courts to, so is another matter. You are not laying the groundwork for that, groundwork for that the surely. The discussion in the Rajya Sabha where this point is put. Chandra Mitra, let me no, put no, this to you. You lay the base, you lay the base current for such challenges in the Rajya Sabha. Okay. In the Rajya Sabha. Chandra Mitra, the earlier point made by Abhishek Singhvi is a very telling one. The amendments passed in the Rajya Sabha can be very easily overruled in the Lok Sabha and undoubtedly your government will do precisely that. However, the amendments passed in the Rajya Sabha will A, attract the press's attention to the infirmities and the weaknesses of the bill. B, they may well also result in a sort of press campaign because they've highlighted issues that up till now the press hasn't appreciated. If both of those happen or either of those happen, the government will be embarrassed. There is room to embarrass the government even if you can't change the government's position. <coughs> well, I would love amendments and they force the government to go back to the Lok Sabha and get all those amendments rejected because this will cause a lot of delay which has become the hallmark of the opposition now in every matter. No matter how important the bills are, whether it's a GST or Aadhaar, how to try and delay matters. And in this case, this is about poor people, about targeted benefits to, as I told you, millions of poor people. And the so-called um, left-wingers, leftist parties and the Congress, which often tails them, they have cry horse over okay. the poor and the subsidies to be given, how subsidies must not be um, kind of curbed and here they are trying to delay, consciously and deliberately delay a pro-poor piece of legislation which will benefit millions okay. of poor. Fine, let them bring the amendments, very good. I welcome them and let us, we will have them overturned and go to the people to say these are okay. your pro-poor uh, activists in the Congress party. You know, Chandan Mitra's confidence maybe even bravado, if I can use that word without being pejorative, rests on the fact that the government believes it can overturn any Rajya Sabha amendments with the greatest of ease and very quickly in the Lok Sabha. But the problem is that the Lok Sabha also has only one day left. And Sonia Gandhi, according to the Economic Times, has already approached the BJD and the Trinamool to make sure that on that one surviving day, the finance bill takes priority over the Aadhaar bill. That means that it's quite possible that any overturning in the Lok Sabha won't happen in the first half of the budget session. It may only happen in the second half. And if that is the case, will that embarrass the government? I don't think it will embarrass the government. I mean, whether it's first half of, or the second half, the idea is to pass the bill. And if they can't do it in the first half, it will be like the GST bill. They'll pass it in the second half, even if they don't have a majority in the upper house. The point is not that. I think it shows a degree of... Uh, Arrogance? Well, not just arrogance, it shows a degree of uh, lack of empathy uh, because the opposition is raising uh, issues. Actually, internally, the BJP itself had raised those issues when the Aadhaar bill was being discussed in the previous government. And uh, I can't understand why you can't sit around so the table and talk about it. So there could be voices within the BJP that are concerned at the fact that issues that should be raised have been pushed under the carpet because time hasn't been given? I think, I think the BJP internally may be asking itself whether this is the right way to go and or whether you should have a dialogue and you should have a discussion and then uh, pass bills like this but I think it's just gone, you know, it's just gone beyond a point where it's beyond retrieval now. Let me raise with you Ashok Malik another concern that Sitara Muchuri very freely shared and that is to do with the fact that because there's only one day left and because there is still a couple of other important discussions that have to happen in the Rajya Sabha, that not only will there be no discussion on Aadhaar at all tomorrow, but more importantly, those amendments that have been circulated, as Mr. Raja says, under Article 109, and which people in want to move, may not get moved at all, because they can't be moved unless there's an opportunity to move them, and that opportunity will only come if there's a discussion. And if there's no discussion, then nothing else happens as far as the amendments are concerned. Now, won't that be a terrible situation as far as the rights of MPs are concerned? 
the privileges and prerogatives of the Rajya Sabha are concerned and the way we handle bills in our democracy. No, we don't have Ashok Malik. Again, I really do apologize to the audience. Our equipment with Ashok Malik today seems to be utterly incompetent. And I apologize to Mr. Malik as well. Let me put that question to you, Aditi. You heard the question. What's your answer? Yeah, I think uh, there is a degree of, uh, uh, as I said, lack of reaching out. There is a degree of uh, uh, intolerance uh, to listening to opinions which you which can I, can I put that to you as well, uh, Abhishek Singhvi, if tomorrow there is no discussion, because the only day left gets taken up discussing other things, which is quite possible, Sita Ramishuri is genuinely scared that is the outcome that will happen, then there will be no chance to discuss amendments. In fact, those amendments won't be raised at all. What will that mean for the Rajya Sabha and for Indian democracy if that worst case scenario happens? It's a double whammy, Karan. The whammy, the first whammy is that you render the Rajya Sabha non-voting and therefore in that constitutional sense important. The double whammy is that even to the limited extent of discussion, you exclude it. That's terrible for democracy. It's a double whammy against democracy. And I think a very important p point was just now made. Many of the issues you've just highlighted are substantive issues which the BJP itself used to oppose the Aadhaar, original concept of Aadhaar. So I think it's absolute hypocrisy. I want to put that duplicity. point to Chandan Mitra. Chandan Mitra, Apart many of the concerns Bala. that I've just mentioned are concerns that your party had when you were in opposition and the UPA was trying to pass Aadhaar. And those concerns still remain valid because remember that this particular bill not only means that Aadhaar is used to take money out of the consolidated fund to pay for subsidies, it also means that for a whole range of things, which I won't read a second time, Aadhaar will be the biometric identification authentication procedure. And those are therefore the concerns you had earlier, those concerns continue. Now, can you give me an assurance that time will be found for a discussion tomorrow? Because people like Yachuri are genuinely scared it will not be permitted. Well, I don't know. I don't think that there is any, any intention not to allow a discussion. But whether discussion, as you rightly asked, will serve any purpose. Because we are very determined to get the Aadhaar bill passed. Uh, whether by taking it to Lok Sabha or by getting it passed in the Rajya Sabha itself or getting it latched so that it becomes law in 14 days time. But the poor of this country cannot wait. And for that, we shall go out of the way to ensure that this bill is true. Okay. The Aadhaar bill you, you, without you, you, you made that point earlier, Mr. Mitra. You are repeating yourself. I'll stop you there. Was, uh, you are repeating yourself. Thing. Let me bring in Mr. Raja. Mr. Raja, yes. the critical issue now is a very simple one. It's no longer to do with whether this should be a money bill or not. That is a fait accompli. The critical issue now is will there be a discussion tomorrow or will there therefore be an opportunity to move those amendments that you say are circulating and which the opposition wants to move. What happens if there's no discussion tomorrow because that's a real possibility. Sita Ramachuri is genuinely worried of that. What happens if there's no discussion and no chance to move those amendments? What will you then do? We are all genuinely worried because the debate on general budget is inconclusive and it has to continue tomorrow. Tomorrow is the only day available. And where is the time for other bill? So there is a government's ploy to uh, avoid discussion on other bill. In fact, uh, the, this is a kind of uh, Chandan Mitra talks about poor people. It, uh, it is not uh, just to but, cheat but my poor question, people. My that question, Mr. Raja, is if the government's ploy succeeds and there is no discussion, what will you do? Or can you do nothing? Uh, that is a blow to democracy because uh, after 14 days, I accept days, that. But what can you do? Automatically no, no, no. I'm asking, what will your step as an yeah, opposition what, what, be at that point? In the in the house, we will try to raise our voice and uh, we will uh, express our concerns and uh, we will express uh, the long-term implications uh, on the functioning of our parliament and uh, the constitution. If uh, government uh, does such things, okay, very quickly. There is so much at stake here. Do you think the press has highlighted all the implications, A, of this being treated as a money bill, B, 
if there's no discussion permitted at all tomorrow and therefore it's deemed passed after 14 days? See of what that means for the government's attitude to the Apas. Has the press done enough to expose and write about this and highlight it? Or do you think here the press has not played the role of a watchdog as adequately as it needs to? Well, I don't know. It's a matter of opinion. I think many op-eds have been written, many editorials have been written. There are various ways in which the press asserts itself, not just in the news pages, in other places also. Uh, I just want to remind you that there is a very strong law. If you ban an organization in India today, you have to, you cannot just ban it. You have to keep bringing evidence to prove why you've banned it. That was a very draconian law brought in a certain time in response to certain conditions. I'm pretty sure that if there are situations where things like this happen, like uh, kind of uh, undermining the constitution, I'm pretty sure that there will be other mitigating circumstances which will overturn this. But those will be largely outside parliament. I think it would be the press, it would be the, the judiciary, it would be the maybe even parliament, We do, who knows. All right. It's not a very happy prospect when you have to look to other institutions to correct the lapses of your parliament, which is supposed to be the temple of your democracy. And let's actually hope that Denuemo doesn't happen tomorrow. My thanks to you for joining me in my studio. My thanks also to all my other guests. Once again, my apologies to Mr. Malik. I'm very sorry, Mr. Malik, that technology let us down. I believe this has happened a couple of times earlier with you as well. It certainly should not have happened today, and I do apologize. If you have been watching, goodbye. Talking about Team India and T20. To do for your preparation, so I think there has to be a, a good balance between everything. Um, so I think awareness counts uh, big time in big tournaments. So so does. पैसे वाले बाबू मेरा बजट बना दो पैसे वाले बाबू मेरा बजट बना दो बजट बना दो बजट बना दो पैसे वाले मेरा बजट तू बना दे थोड़ी सी